direct linear variation. Let's unpack each of these three words so that we know what we're talking about and why it applies. Variation. Variation, we can start at the end, uh, just means when something changes, right? So this is about changing quantities. These are quantities that don't stay the same. Things like time or distance or temperature. They change, they vary, but they vary in a particular way. Right at the front here, direct. Um, this word's a bit weird because I don't see any reason why it's called direct, but what they refer to, because it's direct and indirect, which we'll get onto later, direct means that how do they change? They change together. That means when one goes up, the other one goes up, as opposed to when one goes up, the other goes down. So direct means they change together. They both rise together. They both fall together. They change in the same, and I guess this is kind of why you've got the word direct there. They change in the same direction, right? When one's increasing, the other one will increase. When one decreases, the other one will decrease. Linear. When we say one gets bigger and the other one gets bigger as well, we mean they get bigger or smaller at the same rate. And when you graph this idea of things happening at the same rate, you get a straight line. So if we put all of these three things together, direct linear variation is when your quantities, they change both in the same way and at the same rate. That's what direct linear variation means. We can write equations that produce this. A direct linear variation equation, or variation equation for short, looks like something you're very, very familiar with, namely this. This is really simple. In fact, it's almost like a step backwards. We looked at more complicated equations than this with like a plus b hanging out here on the side. When you see a number in front of the x, you're used to seeing an m. You're used to seeing an m. What does that mean? Uh, that means the gradient, so it's like the steepness of the graph. Is it going up really fast or is it going up slowly? When in the context of variation it gets a new fancy name, um, I'm just telling you it so that you recognize it in these questions. It's called the constant of, wait for it, proportionality. Um, it just captures this idea that if something is in, or if two things are in direct linear variation, then they are proportional to each other, right? You get some of these, some of these, they're in the same ratio every single time, okay? So, if this is the case, one of the ways that you can know that something is in, or two things are in direct linear variation is, if you have a look at these two values here, I can divide through by x, which gives me this. Bless you, okay? What this means is, when you divide a y by an x, you always get the same number. I say always the same because it is, after all, a constant, as opposed to these guys, which are variables. Okay? So if you divide one quantity by the other one, let's see, you always get the same number. Let me show you what that looks like. Um, you can open up, if you haven't already, to 9D. Let's do question one together, and you'll see how all these ideas are applied. <laughs> it's cold. Should I get the heater in a second? I will in a minute. Okay, let's scroll down a little bit. Okay, let's begin right at the top. It says, complete this table which shows the price of packets of pencils. So before we begin, you can see what's happening here. The changing quantities are, have a look at them, how many packets you buy and the price that you pay for those pencils. So these two quantities can change because you can buy more packets, you can spend more money or less, okay? Let's draw up this table together, shall we? We're going to need to have uh, six columns, two rows. So let's draw it up. <laughs> a 
I'm going to abbreviate it just a little bit. I'm just going to put, rather than the full sentence, the full phrase, I'm going to put N on the top row and dollar sign P on the bottom row. Okay. By the way, while we're looking at a situation like this, one of these would usually be described as the independent variable, while the other one is the dependent variable. Which one do you think is the most natural choice for which one's which? Yeah, I think probably the most natural way of thinking about it is the price depends on how many packets of pencils you buy. Okay, So usually we put the dependent one down here and the independent one up here. So I'm just going to get this there vaccinating over there. Okay, we're going to just try out the values. One, two, three, four, and five. And you've got... Right in the middle here, $4.50 as the price that corresponds to that number of pencils. Okay? So it says complete this table, which shows the price, with no other indication of any other change, like some group discount or something like that. We can assume that we've got direct linear variation here. You buy more packets of pencils, you're going to have to pay more money for them. So I'm going to use this equation down here. Dependent divided by independent. $4.50 divided by 3. $4.50 divided by 3. What's that equal to? Hi, who are you looking for? Uh, sure, hold on. No one else here. Do you know where it is? No. Yep, I would assume so. Thank you. Thank you. Hey Nick, can you get the door for me? Yeah. Thanks. I divided through. I got this number. What's the special name for this number in this scheme? Have a look. I've got it in red. It's the, it's the constant, because this thing's not going to change, right? of proportionality. Uh, it's constant because the price of pencils is going to be the same every time. So I can use this guy to work out everything else. Two packs of pencils at $1.50 each will be? $3. Great. Well, I don't need to put a dollar sign. I've already got one out the front. Um, over here, the single packet of pencils, $1.50. And I can keep on going. This is not complicated to complete. Okay. <clears throat> 